So the Mako shark is known for being agile and fast, like our team and our software is. Um, and Mako sharks are also known predators of the barracuda. So we are coming for the Kuda moat. And that was a uh, you know, decision that we made very early on. Um, so thank you guys all for being here and thank you for entertaining me. Um, my name is Walid, I'm the founder and CEO of Mako. Um, and we build AI powered GPU kernel optimization software. And in this talk, we're gonna talk about a couple key components. Um, and each component comes with its own proposition. So first, do we need more GPU kernels? Is there still innovation to be had there? Or have all the important ones already been written? Um, second, we're gonna talk about Mako's auto-tuned AI software stack. And third, we're gonna talk about the future of automatic kernel generation. Um, so for each of these, the proposition is an emphatic yes, we do need more GPU kernels. There are many more kernels to be written. Um, this is evidenced by a lot of things that we'll get into. Um, the second piece, the second proposition, is that with this emergence of thousands and thousands of other possible kernels and the hyperparameters of kernel libraries, um, a new problem emerges, a search problem. One in which there are thousands of kernels to choose from, so how do you select, tune, and uh, implement the, the optimal kernel? And then third, this is gonna be a driving force behind the creation of tens of thousands of new kernels. We're gonna talk about the latest in AI-based software, LLM-based code generation, and the automatic kernel generation process. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about how Mako software contributes to all of these. So first, do we need more kernels? Um, the answer is yes, but let's talk about why. So when it comes to deep learning computation, you design your model using PyTorch, um, you generate some sort of an operation graph, and then the big challenge when it comes to writing an efficient kernel and, and creating proper um, you know, efficient systems is, is essentially one of merging and fusing the kernels together. You wanna utilize your GPU hardware as, as well as possible. And so how this is done today is number one, we have vendor provided libraries, like NVIDIA's Kublas, Rockblas, um, all sorts of libraries from the different chip vendors. Number two, we have the custom kernels, which are written by hand by experts. Number three, compiler generated kernels. This is like Torch Inductor, which generates Triton kernels. Um, and then number four, which we'll get to later, is the AI generated kernels. Um, but the answer to do we need more kernels is the obvious yes, um, mainly because there's just so many different ways to implement the same exact math on a GPU. Um, one of the most popular things that you do with a new kernel is kernel fusion. Um, this happens automatically in inductor and it also happens you know, when you write these kernels by hand. A really popular one is fusing you know, linear operations with matrix math. And so a lot of times the matrix math can be jammed right between two ops. And so the fusion of those means that you have less calls back to global memory, you're more efficient essentially in how you're able to do the compute and you can balance compute and memory bandwidth by doing this. Um, a really good example of this is flash attention. Flash attention, which by the way, came five years after the original attention paper, is a great example of an algorithmic innovation and in how to you know, run something more efficiently. This really opened the door in terms of long context language models. So you see this you know, really large outer loop and inner loop. Originally before flash attention, that matrix math was huge. And that bandwidth required to, to, to crunch this matrix was uh, prohibitive. But now with flash attention, we can tile things and you can greatly reduce the bandwidth requirement. I um, mean, this is an example of a really high quality kernel. Um, a bunch of other kernels need to be written for any other algorithmic innovation, actually. So we're gonna talk about quantization a little bit. There's actually a whole number of quantization algorithms that I'm not gonna get into, and each single one of these requires their own kernels to use. To be able to leverage the algorithmic improvement literally needs you to take a kernel engineer and to implement that kernel um, such that you can actually make, take advantage of, of, of what's up there. Razor is something that actually comes from one, someone on our team. Um, our chief science officer designed this one in his lab at Cornell Tech. Um, and again, this is something that needs a custom kernel in order to implement this. 
And finally, if you didn't have enough proof that we need more kernels and that more kernels are coming, just two months ago, right, DeepSeek shocked the world. Or at least, you know, everybody was talking about it for a really long time. And the core thing that DeepSeek did here, the, 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 the whole shock was how efficient they were able to make something. And this is they introduced low rank factorization into the attention head. They had multi latent attention. Um, and really, their, um, their advances in efficiency were driven by um, not only algorithmic, but to, to create the kernels that come with it. And they had that great kernel release um, where they released all the kernels. So, a lot of really cool stuff. What we know is that we still need to write custom kernels. There are new algorithms coming. There's a lot of efficiency still on the table. And I didn't even get into talking about all the new hardware innovations um, that come along that also need new kernels. So do we need new kernels? Yes. The second part of this talk, auto-tuning kernels. Now that we have so many different options, how do you choose the best ones? Even if you look at just NVIDIA's cut list, the number of hyperparameters and the number of options for that are huge. So when it comes to selecting kernels, typically we use compilers, right? This is a, a very common way. Torch compiles an absolute like beauty of a software stack, honestly. And how it works is you take your PyTorch, you literally, it's as, as simple as running torch.compile, and then it goes through the process, it creates an FX graph, and then it calls the inductor backend. So what we want to do how we auto-tune and automatically select kernels is really about intercepting that FX graph and expanding beyond just inductor to supporting multiple backends. Now, the challenge when you do this is that there's a ton of different backends. There's literally thousands of different options. And this very quickly becomes an NP hard search problem. How are you going to try everything and run everything? The amount of compute resources it takes is... Um, it's just, it's really impressive, honestly. So what we do is we innovate in this search problem. We create a search strategy that uses reinforcement learning. We have an evaluation strategy that uses uh, zero cost proxies. Um, and the, the goal really is to create this offline auto tuner that can conduct this search in the background on any number of GPUs and identify the optimal implementations for your PyTorch model. The optimal implementation is saved in a web cache. So that way, every time you hit mako.compile, it doesn't take 24 hours. It happens really quickly. You immediately fetch the fastest implementation that's been saved thus far. And you can enable the search to continue offline in the background and continue to discover new uh, optimal strategies. Um, early results show some really promising numbers. We are seeing 20 to 30% improvements on NVIDIA GPUs and 50 to even 2x improvements on AMD GPUs. Now the final part, the exciting part of this talk is the future. So we already talked about, do we need more kernels? Yes. We already talked about the problem that this introduces, which is now thousands of kernels to choose from. But importantly, a generation or um, an era of automatically generated GPU kernels is upon us. And these thousands of GPUs are gonna very quickly become 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 GPUs to choose from. And these are gonna be coming from pure end-to-end -end LLM generated kernels and software engineers who are now empowered by AI powered coding assistants that enable them to write high quality kernels. This is gonna to lead to an algorithmic explosion. New models, new architectures are finally gonna be able to be deployed at scale. And how are we doing this? Well, when it comes to automatic kernel generation, the first thing you need is a benchmark. And so out of Stanford University, I think some of the kernel bench people are here. Um, kernel bench is the first um, really widespread benchmark for LLMs for kernel generation. Um, it has a couple different levels. Level one is just single kernel operations all the way down to level four, which is an entire Helgen face model just thrown at the, the engine. Um, the initial results, you know, showed some functional, some non-functional, but it's a good place to start. NVIDIA shortly after released a blog post where they leveraged test time scaling, which we also call reasoning models, um, to, to generate functional and effective kernels. So this is from an NVIDIA blog post. They showed that they could use the DeepSeq model and by increasing test time scaling and having this agent loop that you can actually recursively improve and iterate over a generated kernel um, and ultimately end up with something that's functional. Now what we're doing in combination with our AI compiler is modifying this kind of a loop. We have our own take on it and we're building our own GPU kernel agent. 
So one of the important things is you want to teach the language model how to use the hardware. So this isn't just adding like the NVIDIA Tensor Core documentation, but it's also adding the AMD Matrix Core documentation. If you want to generate kernels for AMD, you can literally give in-context examples. Um, you can iterate and add an extra step. Well, um, we don't just, you know, step one is does the kernel compile, yes or no? Step two is, um, is it numerically and functionally correct? Step three, you benchmark it, is it faster or slower? We had a step four, we actually had a profiler where we can input back into the recursive loop of this agent um, more detail on why it's faster or slower and where it is. Um, finally, we, we take good results and we use that to fine tune the model even further. So essentially we're building this really cool AI agent, we're building it into the compilation flow so that we can have continuous offline optimization, and super importantly, we are hiring. So if you care about training models, if you care about fine tuning models, if you care about AI performance, if you know what the difference between VLLM and LLVM is, please uh, reach out to us.